Hi, my name is Eric Kaufman, and I'm here today to talk about me and my partners, Jeff Stout and Nathan Falta's company, Revved Up Awards. This presentation will focus on four main sections. Project planning, where we'll discuss how we came up with our idea. Project management, where we'll discuss our schedule for the project. Um, customer needs and target specifications, where we'll discuss our intended customer. And lastly, economic analysis, where we'll discuss the economic viability of the product. The only constraints for the product was that it had to be marketed towards college students and it had to have new parts. Based on this, the team came up with a variety of ideas. A watering apparatus for plants, a jet-powered scooter, an electric skateboard, a sun reflector for your car, a hologram clock, and lastly, a keyboard typing machine. With all these ideas in mind, we selected three. The first we selected was the water apparatus for a plant, the second was the jet-powered scooter, and lastly, the electric skateboard. We chose the watering apparatus because we believe that a larger target, a larger audience in the college world where kids don't have a lot of time and likely to get to water their plants. However, we chose not to do this because we thought the market was too small for college students with plants. We chose the jet powered scooter because we thought it would be cool to sell. And, however, we didn't choose that in the end because another key aspect of the college market is the cost has to be low. And this project would not be cost effective effective if we chose this item. Lastly, we chose the electric skateboard. We chose this item because it had a large audience and market on college campuses where transportation is very important. And secondly, we believed we could make it at an affordable cost. Now, with the selected product, we created a mission statement to develop the product further by discussing points on the left side of the figure. The ones I want to point out are the product description the key business goals as primary and secondary markets. The description of the product describes what we want to do. The general idea of it, which is we want it to go 20 miles an hour for about 10 miles. The business goals show what we want to accomplish. We want to have a 35% profit margin, as well as a solution to the transportation at larger distances. And lastly, the markets. Our primary market was college students, but we believe the same type of transportation can be used in cities, so we chose this as well. And then our secondary market is thrill seeking adventures. We chose this based off of already seen niches in the industry. Next, to identify the type of person that buy our product, we created a customer profile. This customer profile describes a made up person that we believe would buy our product. Uh, for ours, to sum it up, is we use the left hand side of this chart here to uh, come up with this. But to sum it up, our person was Michael, Austin Michaels, and he was very outdoorsy and very active. And then the use case describes how our product would be used from opening the box to first use. So for our use case, we want the product to be ready as soon as you open the box. You just have to charge it one to two hours and you're ready to go. The other two key things I want to point out is the flows. Those represent the different ways the product will be used after opening. The first flow, we decided that he's going to be going to class. So we made it that he's going to use it to go to class. Now on flow two, he's going to run errands or get groceries or something along those lines. To help plan out our product, we made a Gantt chart as you can see on the screen. The project included a total of 11 tasks that started on October 1st and will end on December 5th, 2018. Now, the blue line represents the, our current progress as of 10-24-18. Um, so we have completed the first two tasks and half of the third task as of then. And then the red line, or pink line, um, represents the critical path. Now, the critical path is the path in which you must complete the tasks because they're the limiting factors in terms of time. And we also chose, as you can see, for most items to be on this critical path by making them sequential. We chose this to the limited manpower on the team. We believed it would be hard to, to get multiple tasks done at the same time. Now, we chose um, our times based on the difficulty of each task. 
So we rated each test on a percent from 1 to 100 on how hard it was. So they all added up to 100. Then we multiply this decimal value by the total time we have left in the project. And we were able to determine how much time we did for each task. After conducting the customer surveys, we surveyed about 45 people using Google Forms. Um, the team took the responses and transformed them into customer needs. The primary needs we found were is that it had to have a controlled descent, had to have a neutral setting, meaning you could pedal yourself and not have any resistance to the motor. It had variable speed and acceleration, it had good range per single charge, and it had to have a high torque to both those. The secondary um, customer needs is that it had good aesthetics, has to look good, people to buy it, uh, regenerative braking, the ability to track and track with GPS, and a battery charged uh, tracker. From our customer needs, we created corresponding target specifications by looking at the top portion of the QFD diagram. We can see the relationship between the customer needs and target specifications. The second column shows us the importance of the customer needs to the, to the product. And the following column shows a numerical value um, that shows the relationship between the needs and the specifications, where five ranks is highly important one ring is not as important. Um, by looking down the diagonal, we see there's a high relationship between the customer needs and its respective targeted specification. Looking at this portion of the QFD, we find that the units to measure are valid specifications, the target ideal values, and the technical difficulty. By combining both portions of the QFD, we find that four target specifications rank higher than the rest. These four target specifications are having a controlled descent when traveling downhill, the ability to travel uphill at a grade of 30%, having a neutral setting up on the motor, so like I said before, pedal without motor without resistance, and maximizing the top speed to the highest possible value. By following these four target specifications, we will be able to align the product abilities to what the customers want. To create a successful product, the team also looked to competitively benchmark against competition. Boosted Boards is one of the biggest competitors in the industry. They create the best products with having a top speed of 22 miles an hour and a range of 14 miles. However, it's very expensive, costing $1,400, which most, most people cannot afford, especially college students. For our product, we chose the scenario one model. This means that the cost of the unit does not decrease with the more units you buy. Secondly, we use target cost and choose the price of our product. Now, since we believe we can get market share by making our price lower, we looked at other competition and made ours a little bit lower at the to a point we believe we can still create a successful product. We chose five hundred dollars per unit. Secondly, we chose 35% profit margin based on other companies as well. And with these numbers, we were able to calculate the maximum manufacturing cost to maintain these numbers, which was $325. With that number, we were able to calculate the profit per unit, which came out to be $175. With these numbers and knowing the fixed cost, which was $10,000, you can calculate the break even point, which is the point you start making money on the company. Um, you can see that point by creating a chart, and the break-even point is the intersection between the total cost line and the total revenue line, which for us came out to be 58 units. You can also use the calculation to find that exact number. No, that's it. the difference between these two lines to the right of the intersection represents the profit, and then the difference between the lines on the left of the intersection represents how much money you've lost at that point. No, and also note, to maximize the profits, because we chose a scenario one model, we have to sell more units, and then the maximum profit is infinity. With project planning, project um, 
management target specifications and an economic, economic analysis done, the RevDevBoard team knows we can make our product a reality. Thank you. Have a good day.